Hola amigos and comrades! Today's video subject will be proper oil change procedure. Despite the fact that oil change on majority of motorcycles is a very simple process that takes about 15 minutes with brakes included, the internet and YouTube in particular is filled with guides that offer all sorts of strange and often bizarre advices. They range from useless but harmless tips, like for example, not only simply warming up the engine before an oil change, but revving the shit out of it in hope to somehow clean it this way. And all the way up to the borderline insane suggestions, like unscrewing the drain plug and letting the engine run for 30 seconds to drain out more oiled oil. Unfortunately, my video won't include any such extravagant practices. It will simply demonstrate a regular, proper oil change without any hocus pocus. At most, maybe there will be a couple of important tips that many people tend to overlook during the process, but nothing more than that. The whole process starts with warming up the engine. You can simply start the motorcycle and ride for about 10 minutes. That will be more than enough. Warming up is necessary, because as the oil heats up in our engine, it becomes less viscose. And during the oil change, we won't have to sit and wait for 3 hours for it to drain. Instead, it will flow out pretty quickly. After the warm-up, we stop and take out the necessary tools to unscrew the, the drain plug and the filter cover. Word of wisdom. First of all, make sure the oil cap in which you will pour in oil is not stuck and can be unscrewed easily. Otherwise, the old oil may drain out, but you won't be able to pour in the new one. Trust me, it feels pretty stupid. Next, we unscrew the drain plug and wait for the old oil to drain. In the meantime, we check the magnet on the plug, if there is one. In my case, the magnet is integrated into the mesh oil screen. This gunky residue on the magnet is normal. The main thing that there are no noticeable large metal particles. We clean the magnet, clean the oil screen and wait for the oil to drain. Unfortunately, it cannot drain absolutely completely. There are many actions that people take to clean the engine thoroughly various flushes, oil additives and so on. In reality, all of this is pretty much useless. The only way to completely clean the engine is to completely disassemble it, wash each part and then reassemble it. Nobody in their right mind will do that with each oil change. However, the old oil is not something to worry about. The small unremovable residue left in the engine is perfectly normal. If you have a strong desire to improve the engine's hygiene, you can simply change the oil more frequently. Using various flushes is ultimately just a waste of time and money. Once the oil has drained, we wipe the drain hole and tighten the drain bolt. There is no need to over tighten it, just ensure a tight seal. It's best to tighten it with a torque wrench according to the specifications in the manual. But more about the torque range later. Next, we move to the right side. Clean and unscrew the filter cover. The easiest way to open it is if we first turn it and then pull it towards ourselves. It's better not to pry it with a screwdriver, since both the cover and the engine crankcase are made of aluminum alloy, which is pretty soft and can be easily damaged. Oil will also pour out of the filter housing, so we keep a drain container and a rag ready. We drain whatever comes out of it and then remove the filter cartridge. Personally, I've never had the patience to carefully pry it out, so I extract it by using this barbaric method. The dirty filter is no longer usable anyway. Next, we drain everything that remains in the filter housing. and install a new cartridge, making sure to put some oil onto the rubber ring, so it doesn't get damaged during installation. Many people, especially those who have filters like this, like to put the oil into the filter in advance, to soak it. 
The idea is that during the start there won't be a need to wait for the filter to fill up with oil and there won't be a situation where the engine runs dry. There is no harm in doing that and if you want to go the extra mile nothing bad will happen. However, in reality it doesn't provide any significant benefit because the new filter actually fills up within a couple of seconds upon starting. Also, considering that the engine starts without load and there are still traces of oil oil present, there is simply is not enough time for any excessive wear to occur. That's why filter priming is not mentioned in manuals. It's an optional step that can be easily skipped. Well, we've installed the cartridge, cleaned the cover, put it back in place and tightened it. Here it's highly recommended to have a torque wrench. The threads on the bolts are very small and they go into aluminum, so it's very easy to strip them. A momentary loss of muscular coordination. Mm -hmm. Few extra foot pounds of energy per second per second. It's better not to rely on our hand in this case. I've found stripped threads in almost every motorcycle where someone had been tinkering before. And I confess that I've also stripped them a couple of times, thinking I could tighten them just like that, with my enormous skill and experience. That's why a torque wrench is a must-have for tinkering with motorcycles. Without it, you are guaranteed to screw up at some point. Another mini-tip for such small threads is that when you tighten the bolt, to ensure that it goes properly into the thread, you can slightly turn it counterclockwise by hand at the beginning. When it clicks like this, you'll feel that the thread has properly engaged and then you can tighten the bolt normally without worrying about it going cross-threaded. And one more thing about torque wrench, after you have done, don't forget to reset it to the zero position, so that the spring inside it is loose. Otherwise, you'll have to recalibrate the wrench at some point. Alright, cool, we've drained the oil, installed the new filter, now it's time to pour in the new oil. It's pretty straightforward, clean everything around the oil fill hole, so that's no debris falling in there. Unscrew the cap and pour in the oil. Choosing the right oil is like a whole religion for everyone. In reality, the simplest and best way is to look in the manual and see the required specification. And I guess it depends on the country, but back in Russia, for example, there was a lot of counterfeit motor oil, so it is important to avoid counterfeit stuff. If it's genuine and matches the specs in the manual, everything will be fine. Pour in the required amount. On most bikes, there is a window on the side, and the oil level should be between two marks. That's how you pour it in, aiming to keep it between the two marks. Once you've poured it in, close the cap and start the engine for a couple of minutes. Don't rev it, let the engine idle. In the meantime, check for any oil leaks, especially around the filter and drain plug. Let the engine run for a few minutes, then turn it off, wait a couple more minutes and check the oil level. If necessary, top it. That's it, you are done. As you can see, changing the oil in the motorcycle is super quick and easy thing. There is nothing complicated about it. It took me about 15 to 20 minutes for the whole process, with most of the time spent trying to place the camera without me blocking the view. Well, ok, I also spent an extra 10 minutes riding here to warm up the engine. And now only one question remains. How often should you change the oil? It's best to follow the recommendations in the manual, taking into account your riding conditions. For example, in my KTM manual the oil change interval is every 7.5 thousand kilometers. But that's a general recommendation. Some people ride more on highways in a relaxed manner, which would be considered lighter usage. Others constantly push their bikes to the limit, resulting in more demanding conditions for the engine oil. Personally, I mainly ride in the city, ride in traffic and do a lot of maneuvering for myself and for videos. 
in my case, it's not extremely harsh usage, but slightly more demanding than normal. Perhaps changing the oil every 7.5 thousand kilometers would be fine. But for the peace of mind, I can change it a bit more frequently, like every 5-6 thousand kilometers. It won't do any harm. So that's the line of thought. Alright, I believe that covers everything for today. If you found this video useful, put a thumbs up and feel free to explore my other videos. I'm sure you'll find something interesting for you. And don't forget to take a look at my video courses. They are extremely useful tools for self-training as well. Thank you for watching and have a great day. Bye.